Guru Patik. What's that smell? It's Juke. I'm sure you oh, wouldn't Juke. like it. Oh, Juke. I love Juke. You seem different somehow. It's a new day, and today's the grand opening of your new tea shop. Oh, we actually got the tea shop. That's cool. What do you name it? <laughs> Saka, good to see you. Here we go. Big moment. Saka. Nice. He deserves it. My most trusted advisor, Long Feng, and his Dai Li agents tried to take control of Ba Sing Se from me. He's just spilling his guts. The Council of Five is meeting to plan an invasion of the Fire Nation. Stop talking. On the day of a solar eclipse. Really? Now that sounds like a fascinating and brilliant plan. Ah, this guy's not cut out to be a leader. I think he's probably a great guy. He likes animals. I like animals. He doesn't have that edge. You blew it. Can you two old ladies quit your bickering for a second? <laughs> You might think you're the greatest earthbender in the world, but even you can't bend metal. That'd be awesome. There is kind of a precedent for that, though. So far, we know that fire has its extra thing, which is lightning. So it wouldn't surprise me if Toph could bend metal. That would be awesome. We have been presented with an extraordinary opportunity, girl. Yeah, I'll say. Jeez. You're so confident. I really admire that about you. Aw, the irony is I admire Ty Lee for being so nice. <laughs> One thing I've been thinking about with Tai Lee is I feel like I can sympathize with her being on the Fire Nation. Some people have suggested to me that it's just Azula's manipulation, but I don't think that's the whole story. I think there are some people that they're really familially oriented or community oriented where the highest good is not a desire for all humanity, but rather to be fiercely loyal to the people you know and your surroundings. It's not hard to think of like an us against the world mentality. And I think if we're really being honest, Everybody thinks that way, but the question is, where do you draw the line between inside and outside? Everybody has a line. At least she's consistent. Whoever controls the Dai Li controls Ba Sing Se. Yep, I mean, she's smart. She got that pretty quick. You must open all the chakras. All of them? <laughs> Tell me everything you know about chakras. Nothing. What are chakras? The water flows through this creek if we open the paths between the pools. The energy flows. Very nice metaphor. I'm learning from this. I'm taking notes here. First, we will open the Earth Chakra, located at the base of the spine. It deals with survival and is blocked by fear. What are you most afraid of? Aang has a lot to be afraid of. <laughs> so many threats, like at every turn. This chakra deals with pleasure and is blocked by guilt. What do you blame yourself for? I ran away. Right, right. He didn't face it. I hurt all of those people. These things happen. But do not let them cloud and poison your energy. Wow, I want to do this exercise. Are we going to get all seven? This is great. I could watch several episodes on this. Guilt is one of my biggest issues. It's like anything I can think of, any memory, even successes, there's always like this attachment of something I did wrong that kind of puts a little stain on it, which is strange. Recognize that these things happen. Don't let it cloud your feeling. This is cool. You need to forgive yourself. So obviously that happened quickly because it's, you know, there's not much time. But that, man, self-forgiveness, that's really hard. I think one of the primary reasons we feel guilty is to be a safeguard against repeating the same actions of the future. I guess the challenge is learning from it and internalizing that lesson in a way that makes the guilt unnecessary without just outright forgetting it because then you leave yourself vulnerable to doing the same thing again. But I really struggle with that. And like Aang, when I think of guilt, one of the primary things that comes to mind is times I've hurt people. Part of what makes it so scary, I think, is when you wake up to things you've done, you're like, how could I have done that? And then that begs the question, what am I doing now that I'm not aware hurts people? It makes you step carefully. But in a way, that's that's inhibitive, like the guy said. I guess maybe one thing that does help is correctly processing things when they occur, owning up to it immediately and feeling the guilt immediately and then apologizing or trying, taking action immediately to fix it goes a long way in like the long-term guilt level. Burying it, not really coping with it or not looking at yourself honestly like, man, I really did that. That drags it way out. We're only through the second chakra, geez. The mines are filled with skunkfish and seaweed. I call it the stinking sink. <laughs> wow, the moment when you realize sock is a chip off the old block. You're definitely your father's son. Yeah. The rest of you men, prepare for battle. Man, imagine how hard these guys must be. They're just like out here. How many of them are, are there? 10, 20? They're just, you know, taking on the Fire Nation this whole time. I said the rest of you men get ready for battle. Damn straight. Sokka the Wise. You had your boat test. Who thought when we came to this city as refugees that I'd end up owning my... 
I just had this image of Azula coming to the tea shop. Is that going to happen? Don't ruin it for Iroh. He's got something nice going for him. What is this called, this tea shop? Did we ever find out the name? Congratulations, Uncle. I'm very thankful. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I'm glad that he... Look at him. He's like smiling and stuff. I guess that fever really <laughs> brought something good out in him. The Jasmine Dragon will be the best Jasmine tea shop Dragon. in the city. I'm thankful because you decided to share this special day with me. Oh. Now let's make these people some Aww, tea. I'm tearing up here. You can just feel the, the goodness. It's so touching. It's like such a long road for these two. All they've been through. That they can find each other and be decent to each other. It just fills your heart up. It's very good. But it's going to get ruined by Azula probably. Yes. Unfortunately. Let's make some tea. My fire trucker would like to eat something other than onion banana juice. <laughs> good one. Moving on. <laughs> He's like, nope. deals with willpower and is blocked by shame. Shame and guilt? God, you're really doing it to me, Patik. What's the difference? What are your biggest disappointments in yourself? I'm never gonna firebend again. Again, hurting other people. I'm a little bit confused what's the distinction between guilt and shame, because for both guilt and shame, Aang thought of hurting others. And for me also, if I think of guilt and shame, I think both about hurting others. You are the Avatar, and therefore, you are a firebender. <sighs> Tastes like onions and bananas, but strangely, something else. Pickles? Mm -hmm. What was that? Princess Azula promised we would go back to the Fire Nation as soon as we capture the Avatar. We just have to be patient. Shush up. Do you want the whole palace to know we're Fire Nation? Sorry. Can't trust anybody. Good work, girls. I'm sure the Dying <gasps> will deliver the message. Damn, she's sly. The fourth chakra is located in the heart. It deals with love and is blocked by grief. Lay all your grief out in front of you. He's got a lot of that. He lost a lot of people. The air nomad's love for you has not left this world. It is still inside of your heart and is reborn in the form of new love. Mm. Yeah, that's really great. Shout out to all the people who watch the Midnight Gospel series. But this is one of the most powerful themes in that show. In loss, you allow yourself to feel it fully. You let it hit you and you kind of collapse under its weight and then that allows your heart to open in that you find this intensity of love that's really powerful and i think that's definitely something that is true like it's loss is unavoidable but in a way opening yourself up to that feeling allows for a stronger more deep more passionate love this is going to sound like a really trite example and i apologize it's just something really recent that i've been thinking about so i had a cat that i was like super attached to i like really loved her speaking of animals when she was about three or four years old I got the job in Korea and I left her with my dad. And my thinking was I was gonna be away for a couple years and come back and then take her. While in Korea, I met my now girlfriend and then after Korea, I decided to move to China. But in between, I came home and I saw her and it was really nice to kind of have that reunion. But right after I went to China, I found out that she died of like mysterious causes. And it was devastating because I felt like I kind of abandoned her. I felt like her life was too short and I didn't adequately take care of her. I know it maybe sounds really weird to think that strongly about an, uh, an animal but I definitely feel a lot of loss about that but what's interesting is now I'm I'm staying living at my dad's house I wasn't planning on living here it just happened because of the whole COVID thing but she had a kitten and so now I'm like getting really close to her son I feel so much love for this other cat like this son who's like such a dope like he's like the dumbest cat ever but I just feel so like grateful that he's here this episode is opening on my heart chakra I'm really lucky both my parents are still alive but I imagine like thinking about their mortality makes me think I'll have a better appreciation for when I have kids. And it's, I guess it's kind of like this endless loop. The awareness of loss and limitations, human limitations, mortality, allows you to love more deeply. All right, that was a little bit heavy. I apologize. The sound chakra, located in the throat. Sound. It deals with truth and is blocked by lies. Why didn't you tell us you were the avatar? Because I never wanted to be. That seems like maybe one of the hardest to relate to because none of us are avatars. And it almost seems easy for him to accept that for us because it's like, well, who wouldn't want to be the most powerful chosen one? But there is something very real and very difficult about being self-honest about who you are and what you are. I think like almost nobody accurately sees themselves. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. One is that you really want to believe you're at the top, like that you're really good and like capable, powerful, smart, funny, attractive. Like everybody wants to believe that because there's so many benefits conferred to us for having all those things. But that's rarely the truth. I mean, we all probably have some of those things or maybe even many of those things, but not all of those things. It's really hard to break through that and like accept that. But holding false beliefs about yourself 
it leads to all sorts of trouble. It leads to you putting yourself in situations that you're not fit for, and others can see that and sniff that out, and it causes a lot of pain. And the only way to really get through that is to like allow that breakdown to happen and be like, okay, wow, I'm not not what I thought. Because you know, maybe in that case, you actually could become that thing. You know, you actually could work on that, but you can't do it if you're protecting yourself from seeing what you really are. Things you think are separate and different are actually one and the same. Like the four nations. Even the separation of the four elements is an illusion. Hmm. Four parts of the same whole. Oh, she's Even doing it. Is just a part of Earth that has been purified. Wow, look at Toph. Sorry to interrupt this chakra discussion, but this is awesome. Come on. You can do it. Woo! Toph, you rule. <laughs> I mean, she does. She's not wrong. It's not false arrogance. What was the chakra about? I totally forgot because of Toph bending metal. This is something that keeps coming up again and again on this channel. I like the idea that we're all connected. Like, I'm really happy that Murupatik said the Four Nations example because that's a human practical interpretation of that, that meaning. There is this illusion of separation between people based on, you know, country and uh, ideology and things like that. It's really important to ask why. Like, how did this separation occur and for what purpose? Because I feel like that breaks down a lot of the power other people have over you is to start questioning like why exactly are these people my enemies why exactly do i hate these people what did they really do that was so bad to me you know like things like that table for two please uncle i need two jasmine mm. one green and one lychee that wasn't what i was expecting let's do this the nice. thought chakra is located at the crown of the head it deals with your cosmic energy let all of those attachments go what why would I let go of Katara? Yeah. It's interesting how the higher up we go in the chakras, the more I take issue with it. I'm not sure why that is. Learn to let her go. Why would I choose cosmic energy over Katara? Yeah, I'm with you, Aang. I'm with you. I really feel that way. I'm glad this is coming up. I, I like, have never gotten, like, this question answered. I'm a little bit scared to hear Patik's answer because it might just unravel my whole life. Three chakras ago, that was a good thing. You must learn to let go. The Fire Nation has infiltrated the city. I just saw Prince oh my God. his uncle. We have to tell the Earth King right away. I'll be sure to let him know. Damn. So I guess Azula would show up, but that made things so much more interesting that they found out via Katara. What the heck? That's some nice drama writing right there. I think it's time for a family reunion. No, but they just built a life. Damn it. By the way, this is another Star Wars parallel. He interrupts his training with Yoda because Leia's in danger. Katara's in danger! By choosing attachment, you have locked the chakra. You won't be able to go into the Avatar state at all. Whoa. Wow. I didn't get my answer. <laughs> yeah, but like, come on. That's Katara. Like, forget the cosmos. Who does it serve? We're humans, damn it. Live beautifully as a human. I'm not some being of light. I have flesh and blood, and I want to save my girlfriend. There's a giant hole in the box. How is that a trick? It's not. I love how she stuck around to get revenge on them. Nice. That is so I cool. Oh my god. I am the greatest earthbender in the world. Don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. Yeah. She legit is. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'll finally prove to you what a great warrior I am. You don't have to prove anything to me. I'm already proud of you. And I've always known you're a great warrior. You know, I so strongly connect with that. I have this thing, like, I think about it all the time. It's like, I really want to help my parents. I really want to help my parents. I wish I was rich. I wish they didn't have to do any work. I wish they had a better life. And every time I express that to them, they're just like, we don't need that. And I'm always equal parts relieved and disappointed to hear that because part of me is attached to the idea of like being uh, like a caretaker, like a protector for them. But they're adults and they, in some ways, they feel the same. They want to give as well. That being said, I still do hope one day that I'm in a position where I can adequately provide in a way that's meaningful, even if they don't need it, just as the gesture, I think would be great for me as a person. Like for my story, I think I need that. This can't be good news. We've been invited to serve tea to the Earth King. Look at Sukhoi's little smiles. It's so tragic that this is not going to go well. Wow, I could watch this episode 10 times and probably do 10 different reactions to it. That episode was life. <laughs> There's just so many things in it. Let's cover all of the emotions. Let's cover all of the human things at the same time. I'm going to be chewing on this one for a while. But yeah, this is definitely a standalone episode because my god. So that's it. I'll see you for the grand season two finale. <laughs>